We have a proven strategy to reverse skin aging today, and the evidence is so strong that this strategy is recommended in the clinical guidelines. Let's explore what happens to the skin during aging, and how this treatment that's available to you today can help reverse that process. As we age, the skin becomes progressively thinner, it has decreased elasticity and impaired metabolic responses. These changes are separate to those caused by sun exposure, or photo-aging. Instead, today we're just going to focus on the normal aging part. In a younger person, the skin is fairly rapidly turned over, where new cells are formed in the deeper layers of the skin and then eventually get pushed out until they reach the surface, and that's the layer that we can actually see. But in older adults, the skin turnover is significantly slower. The skin also has decreased blood supply and nutrition. It loses about 75% of its collagen, so collagen is there to help keep everything together. And the collagen that remains is fragmented and disarrayed. The chains of glucose aminoglycans are disrupted, leading to a loss of hydration and decreased resilience. Plus, since the skin turnover is slower, that leads to an accumulation of senescent cells. So these are so-called zombie cells that no longer divide and damage the surrounding cells. What's really exciting though is that in addition to a great diet, regular exercise, and high quality sleep, we've now got a treatment to reverse this process, and this treatment is called retinoid creams. Retinoids are a class of naturally occurring compounds that are related to vitamin A. They exert their effects by binding and activating activating two groups of receptors, which causes significant increases in collagen production, increased skin turnover, and improved blood supply. And here's what the human clinical studies show when these creams are used to fight aging. A 2007 randomized clinical study comparing 0.4% of retinol lotion to a placebo found that there were significant improvements in the retinol-treated skin with decreased fine lines and wrinkles. And when they looked at the skin using a microscope, they found significant increases in the glucose amino glycans, meaning that the skin could actually hold on to water and remain hydrated. They also found large increases in collagen production, and separate studies showed significant improvements in blood supply, where they could actually see growth of new blood vessels, meaning that the skin could actually get the nutrition that it needs. All of these positive changes that are seen in the clinical studies is the reason why clinical guideline databases such as UpToDate say that these age-related changes now appear to be mutable. So we've talked about the benefits of retinol creams, but what about the side effects. Well, they can cause photosensitivity, as in, the skin is more sensitive to sunlight. And when you start using these creams, for the first three months, they can irritate the skin. And while the absorption of these creams into our blood is very small, women of childbearing age must use effective contraception. The final concern that I've seen online regarding this treatment is that if this treatment causes increased cell turnover, does that mean that we're going to cause aging? We're going to cause the skin to become senescent? This is a concern for some people, because a cell can only divide so many times before it has to stop. So far though, from the decades of use, this doesn't seem to be a problem because remember, it's not only increased skin turnover, it's also improved blood supply, meaning that the skin can actually get better nutrition. We're also improving the extracellular matrix, so we're improving the nutrition and structure of the skin, meaning that there's less stress to the skin cells. So which retinoid is best because there's lots of different forms and names? Well, tretinoin is the most extensively investigated therapy for aging. But there is a newer generation called adapalene or differin gel, and this is more selective towards the receptors, meaning that there's less skin irritation. And we do have a 2018 randomized controlled study that was published in the European Journal of Dermatology. It compared the medium strength adapalene, so 0.3%, to the medium strength tretinoin, so the 0.05% creams. What they found is that both creams were effective without any significant differences. So so based on that study, you can use either adapalene or tretinoin, but the adapalene, it may be less irritating to the skin. Overall, for the patients that I see in the clinic, if they're considering this treatment, I always suggest to them to use it at night and start using the lower strength. For tretinoin, that's the 0.025%, and for adapalene, that's the 0.1%. And start by only using very small amounts every second to third day, and gradually build that up to the point where you're using it every day. And then for further benefit, you can gradually increase the strength. During this video, we've talked a lot about collagen and how it gets disrupted during aging, so make sure to check out this next video here on collagen peptide supplements and how that can help improve our collagen structure. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from the ingredients, as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.